Welcome to 2021 product release event of RF Elements. I am Thomas, and I will introduce you to our exciting new products and important product improvements. At RF Elements, we focus on fundamental innovation. We have defined new industry paradigm back in 2014. Our technology enables tremendous spectrum efficiency by solving the problem with noise, the number one problem of wireless networking. As a responsible vendor, our mission is to help the whole industry not just selected customers. And with the most scalable ecosystem on the wireless market, your business can grow without limits. As a WISP, you probably experienced a surge in demand for broadband connectivity during the pandemic. While the global lockdowns, financial or supply chain issues complicate everyone's lives, WISPs stand tall and do their part in keeping our everyday activities going, enabling remote work and keeping us connected to those we care about. At our developments, we are proud to be part of this mission by delivering the best performing products to the market. Once this presentation is over, there will be space for your questions in English and Spanish as well. So let's have a look at our new exciting products. First, we bring you a completely new product group called Starter Products. Starter Products are designed for customers who, as the name suggests, are starting with RF Elements antenna technology, but have restricted budgets. Customers who want to benefit from the great beam performance of RF Elements antennas, but they are not ready to enter the Twistport ecosystem right now. Starter products offer great beam performance. We made absolutely no compromises here, so don't let the lower price tag trick you. Starter antennas perform way above any competitive products with similar pricing but there are a few important differences compared to our other antenna series to be aware of. The first big difference is that starter products don't have twist port. They are equipped with existing radio interfaces such as RPSMA connectors and all third-party waveguide interfaces currently on the WISP market. So if you're firmly decided on the radio platform you use, the good thing about the starter products is you don't need to buy any additional adapters. At the same time, your investment into the antenna remains locked into the particular radio interface. Secondly, starter products have limited scalability. We only offer four of them and plan on adding just a few more in the future. And while the scalability of the starter products might be better than the competitors, it is still nothing compared to the variety and possibilities of our Twistport antennas. Twistport represents the widest and most scalable antenna toolset on the market. Starter Horn is an 18 dBi gain symmetrical horn with 30 degrees beam width. Starter Horn is an access point antenna, so if you have a sector covered by a traditional patch array antenna suffering from high interference levels, migrating to Starter Horn, you'll see a huge difference. Let me explain the magic. Starter Horn 30 has a symmetrical mainly pattern. Here, symmetrical means that the beam width is exactly the same in azimuth and elevation planes, so the symmetrical narrow beam delivers unique coverage pattern and excellent MIMO performance. Starter Horn does not have any side lobes, so unlike the traditional patch array sector, it only radiates the signal in the direction you point it at. Zero side lobes means an antenna has very high beam efficiency, and Starter Horn is not an exception. 92% beam efficiency means that 92% of the power it radiates is contained in the main lobe. For comparison, a typical patch array sector has beam efficiency around 65%. The stability of antenna radiation pattern with changing frequency is important for consistent performance as you change the channels. While with the traditional sector, the main beam and the side lobes change drastically as you sweep the frequency, with starter horn, this change is minimal, making the coverage it provides stable and reliable. Starter horn, as an access point antenna, can deliver huge improvements compared to the traditional patch array sectors. It is the zero side lobes radiation pattern that makes all the difference. The lack of side lobes means minimum noise received and transmitted, enabling each sector to perform at the limit of what the access point radio can deliver. The lack of side lobes also makes collocation extremely simple. The neighboring access points do not see each other, so you can keep adding more and more sectors without any degradation whatsoever to those already in place, which is really unthinkable with the traditional patch arrays. Now you can really grow your network throughput. The installation of the start horn is quick and easy. It only takes two bolts and a V-bolt bracket to attach to the tower. And once the aiming of the azimuth and elevation is adjusted, 
you only need to tighten about four bolts to secure the position. Also, the height of the starter horn is about a quarter of the traditional sector, so you can put many more antennas in the same space or save the money for the tower rental. Starter horn comes with RPSMA connector interface, so you can connect any radio you have. Additionally, removing the SMA connector, you can plug ubiquity waveguide radios directly. Despite a competitive price tag, starter horn is made using premium materials, such as die cast and extruded aluminium and stainless steel, to extend its longevity and an environmental resistance. Besides the wireless industry and its sustainability, we equally care about the planet, so the starter horn packaging is made of cardboard. Starter Horn 30 comes at an attractive pricing of 89 US dollars MSRP and will be available with your distributors within two weeks. Starter Dish is a line of three parabolic dish antennas designed for 5 GHz unlicensed band. Starter Dish are cost efficient and are ideal CPE antennas with 21, 24, and 27 dBi gain. Starter Dish design emphasizes minimized side lobes to avoid side lobe connections and noise collection as much as possible. The gain of all three starter dishes is stable over the whole frequency band from 5.1 up to 6 GHz, which again is important for stable and reliable performance. Starter dishes are great CPE antennas. Their optimized radiation pattern helps you minimize the noise the CPE radio sees and thus maximize the throughput you can work with. Where previously, because of the side lobes of the directional patch arrays, the CPE radio was working with extremely noisy and unstable conditions. The mounting mechanism of the starter dishes is a simple and durable V-bolt bracket with the same mechanical adjustment of the azimuth and elevation as the starter horn one. You can connect Mimosa C5X and Ubiquity waveguide radios directly out of the box. All the parts are included in the package. If you want to use any other radios, you can get an optional adapter offering two RP-SMA connectors. This adapter, though, is not part of the package and needs to be purchased separately. Start edition antennas come in dense packages of five, so the shipping cost is greatly reduced. The pricing of the starter dishes is very competitive, with 60, 70, and 90 US dollars MSRP per antenna. In a nutshell, starter products include starter horn, an access point antenna, and three starter dishes for CPE applications. They offer excellent beam performance in a cost-effective package and should be available with any of our master distributors late April up to early May. Asymmetrical horns are our flagship product series and they've received the 2019 Product of the Year award from WISPA. Despite being extremely successful, they had a few quirks that needed to be ironed out so we did our homework. Let's have a look at the updates. All asymmetrical horns are now equipped with the new bracket called UBR. It is our brand new design of an antenna bracket that solves all the problems and imperfections reported from the field. First of all, the new UBR bracket is simply a massive chunk of aluminum. It has a stainless steel hardware. It has much bigger contact surface with the pole and much stronger grip thanks to the increased size of the stainless hardware. All the bolts are now M8 size and come with the black colored surface coating to prevent seizing. UBR also provides much easier alignment thanks to the angle measures laser engraved directly on the bracket. Also, do you remember when you needed the custom hex key that is difficult to come by? With the new UBR bracket, a standard five millimeter hex key is enough to tighten all the bolts, which let's be honest, makes the installation a lot easier. The 30 degree asymmetrical horn received a major mechanical update. The attachment of the antenna body with the bracket is now much more sturdy and durable, thanks to the extruded aluminum ring around its perimeter. The ring increases the structural strength of the antenna and makes the beam switch flip a piece of cake. The asymmetrical horn product update is effective to both the Twistport and carrier class versions and they have new product IDs as well as updated pricing. The new antennas will gradually replace our current asymmetrical horns during the following three months and will be available with our distributors. These are our new Ultra Dishes. For those who are new to our Elements products, Ultra Dishes are parabolic dish antennas for point-to-point -point and CPE applications equipped with our proprietary Twistboard connector. 
the new generation brings three antennas with 21, 24 and 27 dBi gain to give you even more flexibility to optimize your links depending on the link budget you're working with. The radiation pattern of the ultra dishes has minimized side lobes, which makes them really great CPE and point-to-point -point antennas. The optimized radiation pattern minimizes the noise level the CPE radio sees, which in turn maximizes the throughput on the customer end. The new ultra dish generation now works in an extended frequency range from 5.1 all the way up to 6.4 GHz, letting you use the Uni 3 up to the Uni 5 bands protecting your investment into our antennas even better. Also, the gain of the ultra dishes is stable within the whole 1300 MHz of frequency range they are working in, which makes the ultra dishes a very stable and valuable antenna for WIST deployments. Second major improvement to the ultra dish series is completely new mechanical design. Let's have a look. First, we significantly reduced the cast materials in structural parts to eliminate the issues with oxidation in harsh environments. So the longevity of the new ultra dish antennas is now even better. Antennas are lighter and very elegant, which is very important for products installed to customer premises. Second is the feed horn installation. Some of our customers have difficulties with the fine thread of the ultra dish feed horn. The new generation has latch holes instead. Simply insert twist in either direction, and after a click, the feed horn is installed. Also swapping the side of the pole on which the antenna is installed became simpler. All you need to do is to change the position of the ring and the handle using standard 5mm hex key, and you're good to go. Ultra dishes have the new UBR bracket from now on. UBR is a much bigger bracket with stronger grip thanks to the increased contact surface with the pole and massive M8 bolts. It also simplifies the alignment thanks to the measures that are easy to read and of course the black surface coated stainless steel hardware to protect it from seizing. The list of improvements goes on. To decrease the wind load and protect the antenna from the weather conditions even better, we now offer an additional radome for the 27 dBi Ultra Dish. The radome is made of high quality ABS plastic with acrylic coating and a mounting ring of stainless steel. The new Ultra Dishes come in the neat packs of two instead of four. And we've also improved our ecological cardboard packaging. And the radomes come in the economical packs of 10 to decrease the shipping fees. The pricing and ordering part numbers have been updated as well. Each of the new Ultra Dishes comes in the packs of two and should be available in May. The radome comes in the packs of 10 and you can purchase it in June. Let's sum it up. We've just spilled a lot of information on you. So if you missed anything, you can find the information and much more on our webpage, including detailed product introduction videos, explaining all the features, as well as the product data sheets. If you're watching this on YouTube, simply check the video description where you find the links to all relevant content. Thanks for watching. And now is the time for your questions. Hi everyone. My name is Jorge and I am the product manager for Latin America at RF Elements. For this part of the presentation, I would like to invite Tasos Alexiu, our product evangelist, and also Caleb Nauer, our product support for the North America region, to help us out with the questions. Hey guys, how's it going? Hey everyone, happy to be here. Hey Tasos, hey Caleb. Hey guys, so one more thing about the questions. Uh, we'll be taking them both in English and Spanish, but the answers will be only given in the language of the question. But don't worry, once the live event is over, we'll put a recording on our YouTube channel and we will add the corresponding subtitles to each question. So regardless, if your first language is English or Spanish, you'll be, you'll be able to check those questions back again. Ahora vamos a la sección de preguntas. Vamos a recibir preguntas tanto en idioma inglés como en idioma español, pero vamos a responder la pregunta según el idioma en que se haga. Pero no se preocupen porque al final, cuando publiquemos la grabación de este seminario, vamos a poner el subtítulo para cada idioma para que ustedes puedan pues leer cada pregunta y entenderlas. Right. And we actually have uh, a few more things for you. Two of the very hot products you, you've been waiting for are, are the twin horn bracket which allows you to install two symmetrical horns with exactly the same aiming without any effort whatsoever. And the uh, twist port adapter for the Mimosa A5X radio. 
as well, of course, including the, the other products we, we just talked about. Entonces, tenemos un par de actualizaciones más. Eh, como pueden observar en pantalla ahora mismo, estaríamos hablando específicamente sobre el Twin Hole Bracket y también sobre el adaptador para Mimosa eh, A5X. Pueden ver la disponibilidad ahora mismo en pantalla para las diferentes regiones donde vamos a estar presentando el producto. As we wait for the questions, so Tassos, uh, what do you think about our new products? I love it, man. It's been a, a long time coming, really. Uh, you know, going through the pandemic and everything like that really kind of delayed uh, a lot of the things that, uh, you know, we, we know we have on the roadmap. And it's great to finally see these new products that we've been working so hard to develop and bring to market finally, finally coming available. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited, very excited. Great. And what about you, Caleb? Yeah, I'm really excited. So I have just recently started working here uh, at RFLMS just a couple of weeks ago. And, um, you know, one of the things that really drew me here and why I wanted to work here was how well they respected customer opinion, feedback, and use that to make changes to existing products, to make changes to packaging, the cut down shipping costs and new product additions and stuff like that. So I'm like, super excited, especially being able to be a part of a project like this or a presentation like this, you know, so early, so early in my tenure. So super excited. Great. Thank you. Cool. So the questions are piling in. Maybe we can start with uh, with one from the English speaking side. So uh, the one first question is the starter edition antennas are only for Mimosa and Ubiquiti CPEs only. What do you think, Tassos? Uh, no, they're not. So the starter products have a uh, built in interface uh, for all of the common Ubiquiti Uh, waveguide connections, right? So this would not just be CPE, this would be the ISO station, which is CPE or point to point, the PRISM station, which is an access point radio, and I, I assume could be uh, point to point as well. Uh, it ships with uh, a waveguide um, uh, adapter that transitions it to accept the Mimosa Uh, C5X radio, and again, probably any future radios that they have built on those uh, same waveguide adapters. And then there's always the option for the RPSMA uh, adapter that goes on there, which would make it make any of the starter products 100% compatible with any really uh, connectorized five gig radio on the market. So it's there's there's a quite a wide array of products that can be used with it. But yeah, the, the waveguide interface is native for some ubiquity and some Mimosa products at the moment. Ahora vamos a tomar una pregunta en español y la voy a leer de nuestro amigo José Miguel Fernández. Nos hace la pregunta, buenos días. La mejora de las antenas cornetas asimétricas únicamente es en el herraje para la instalación. Correcto. En el herraje de instalación, eh, o sea, ya pueden ver las mejoras y además también, eh, o sea, el anillo que le da fortaleza a, a la antena para que pueda aguantar incluso en mayores, de, digamos, en velocidades de los vientos en torre. El sistema, de, ya lo pudieron ver en la presentación, el sistema de montaje VR, que también es un sistema completamente nuevo, más robusto que el anterior y por lo tanto les va a dar a ustedes más fortaleza en la antena en la torre. Pero sí, la respuesta directa a tu pregunta, Miguel, es si es correcto. Es en el sistema de instalación, en los herrajes, la principal mejora de las antenas asimétricas. All right, so another English one coming. Are the new radomes compatible with the old ultra dishes? What do you think, Caleb? Uh, no, they will not be compatible with the old dishes. So the new enhanced dishes that we created, both the 27 and then the other two, the, the 24 and the 21, we've really optimized the design of these products to not only fit the radome, but on the 27, but also some uh, improved RF characteristics and stuff like that. So at the time, from an economical perspective and from a performance perspective, uh, we're not going to be having a radome for the existing Ultra Dish products. Muy bien, vamos a continuar con otra pregunta en idioma español. Esta vez es de Víctor de la Nuez. Un saludo a todos los amigos de Wi-Fi Canarias, desde allá, que tanto nos siguen a nosotros. Nos hace la siguiente pregunta. Eh, no me dio tiempo, no nos dio tiempo a eh, observar la tabla de las fechas. ¿Para cuándo estarían disponibles estas antenas en España? Víctor, abril, mayo deben estar disponibles ya en lo que es el canal EMEA, que es Europa, 
eh, Medio Oriente y África. Entonces, eh, por favor, quédate atento con nuestros distribuidores ahí en España, que ellos lo estarán anunciando próximamente. So let's go to another one. Will there be a 30 or 34 DBI dish designed and released by RF Elements? Tassos, what do you say? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's already been talked about quite publicly, uh, you know, that a, a 30 DBI dish uh, is more than likely soon. I should have wore a different shirt. <laughs> um, but yeah, absolutely. Uh, larger and larger form factor dishes from RF Elements is absolutely something that the market can expect from us uh, here in the, the, the near to distant future. Absolutely. Perfecto. Bueno, tenemos una pregunta muy interesante. Eh, de, eh, a ver, Vladimir Lombeida nos pregunta, ¿los modelos Starter Horn van a reemplazar a las antenas Horn Generación 2 o las simétricas Generación 2? No, eh, Vladimir, eh, no los van a reemplazar, más bien, y como se dijo en la presentación, es para personas que están iniciando en, eh, o sea, en como ser WISP o quieren reemplazar sus antenas existentes y quieren eh, básicamente no aventurarse en una primera iteración con las antenas que tienen Twisport y quieren probar la tecnología de antenas de RF Elements por el nombre eficiencia que tienen. Entonces más bien esta es una, una serie de entrada para esas personas que desean poco a poco ir mirando sus torres y eh, realmente los presupuestos se ven un poco apretados. Pero para nada, no es un reemplazo, incluso se dijo en la presentación que el ecosistema Twisport realmente representa la caja de herramientas más completa que existe en la industria para las personas, para los WISP. Entonces, la gama Starter más bien es para personas que están iniciando una migración. Pues entonces, otra pregunta bastante interesante de Jonathan. Eh, nos dice, ¿se espera escasez de estos productos? Esto me preocupa porque redunda en el alza de precios en las tiendas y sería un despropósito para las nuevas series Starter Antenas. Para nada, Jonathan. Realmente, eh, ya tenemos el stock disponible. Ya están en camino los distribuidores. Algunos están próximos a tenerlos ya. Nuestros distribuidores master principales. Eh, y no, para nada, no va a haber ninguna escasez de este tipo de productos. Are we still expecting a new 2.4 gigahertz array sector? Casos, what do you say? Absolutely, and I bet you I know who's asking that question right now. So, <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely, the array sector is uh, is definitely coming. Um, and again, you know, th this whole this whole process, as you know, people keep asking questions and stuff like that, uh, has, has really been prolonged uh, because of you know, again, the, the global issues that we've had and still continue to have. So yes, it's definitely coming. You you will see something, and I think you're going to be very very excited when uh, you finally see the finished product. Muy bien, entonces eh, Daniel Chaco, un saludo para ti. Primeramente nos pregunta, hola, ¿desde y hasta qué frecuencia trabajan las Ultra Dish? Bueno, Daniel, en la nueva presentación, en la que acabaste de ver hace unos minutos, eh, nosotros especificamos que funcionan desde 5.1 hasta 6.4, o sea, la nueva serie de las, eh, de las Ultra Dish. Las anteriores funcionan desde 5.1 hasta 6.1. Muy bien, Víctor nos pregunta que dónde puede obtener los datos de nuestros productos. Víctor, ahora, luego que terminemos esta, esta sesión de preguntas y respuestas, vamos a actualizar nuestro sitio web con todos los datos técnicos, fichas técnicas, manuales, guías de instalación y además los videos también de desempaquetado de todos estos productos. Por lo tanto, puedes entrar a nuestra página web seleccionar el producto que desees y vas a encontrar entonces toda la documentación en español, tanto fichas técnicas, guías de instalación, eh, videos, todo está 100% en español. Entonces te invitamos a que entres a nuestro sitio web y puedas consultar ahí la información. Gracias. Ok, what is the difference between the Ultra Dish 550 to the current generation and the Starter Dish 27? Tazos. Uh, mainly it's, it's the, the pricing and the, the mechanical design of it. Uh, the, again, the, the, the 550 um, or the, the current 27 DBI, you know, is made and optimized to uh, have a ray dome where the starter dish doesn't. Um, but as far as the performance goes, I mean, they're, they're practically identical. Again, there was really no... Um, there, there was no sacrificing of performance when we brought the starter product to market. We, we, you know, we focused all of our energy to ensure that 
you would get the RF performance that you expect to see from RF elements. It's just really more of the user experience and, and how it mounts and, and uh, the, the materials that are used uh, in essence. So, so from the RF standpoint, you should notice very little different. Uh, maybe it's not as wide band where the symmetrical horns go up to 6.4 gigahertz. The starter horn stops at six. So there are a few things like that. I mean, the, the spec sheets will definitely point out the differences uh, and it's, it's very little. Also, uh, like to point out, of course, you know, the Ultra Dish series supports the full twist board architecture, uh, whereas the starter dishes do not. You know, that's the main product differentiator between those two classes. And I think that's an important thing to note, you know, for people wanting to use those particular size dishes. Very good point there, Caleb. Thanks to the new guy. Good one. <laughs> <laughs> right. And actually also be... Uh, because of that mounting. So the starter dishes are really meant for a CPE application. Yeah, so the performance is great. No questions there. But the mount really, you know, is, uh, is definitely not as good as the one with the ultra dishes, which will really withstand a lot more wind pressure, environmental uh, influences otherwise too. Yeah, you would want to use your ultra dishes for tower based implementations. You got a lot of wind load and stuff like that. You want that bigger, beefier, right. new re enhanced mount for sure. Ok, muy bien. Entonces, tenemos un, vamos a resumir un par de preguntas en una sola respuesta. Nos preguntan cuándo estará disponible en México y a la vez también nos preguntan cuándo estará disponible en Perú. México va a ser, de hecho, uno de los primeros eh, sitios donde tendremos este producto disponible con Cisco. Debe estar en las próximas dos semanas ya en almacén. Eh, denle un tiempo poco más, un poco menos para que ellos distribuyan por sus sucursales pero eh, fin de abril, inicio de mayo primera quincena de mayo ya deben estar con Cisco en México respecto a Perú, ya estamos trabajando con los distribuidores allí presentes para que en los meses de junio, julio o quizás agosto ya estén disponibles con ellos también Cool Will you be showing the starter horn and starter dishes at Wisp America next week? Tazos Yes, yes, uh, I will have uh, a starter dish so that way you can see the interface and the mounting brackets as well as a starter horn. So, yes, we will have that there. Hope to see you. Muy bien, pues tenemos otra pregunta también eh, de parte de Rubén, Rubén Peña. Eh, nos pregunta que si el material de los nuevos modelos también se recomienda protegerlo con alguna pintura especial para zonas cerca del mar. Evidentemente, Rubén, eh, la misma recomendación y quizás lo que han visto otras personas también, otros clientes, otros eh, WISP que han desplegado nuestras antenas, la capa extra de protección no viene mal en ambientes donde realmente hay una agresividad, de, o sea, hay una salinidad muy alta en el aire. Incluso esto se encuentra especificado dentro de la ficha técnica de este producto en específico, de la serie Starter, eh, puede des descargarlo cuando lo pongamos próximamente en nuestra página web y ahí se recomienda pues básicamente eh, tener un poco de cuidado con este tipo de entornos y estas antenas porque bueno, realmente van a sufrir también. Entonces una capa extra nunca viene mal. Si se lo pueden aplicar, pues bienvenido sea. Ok. So, are the starter antennas replacing the, the carrier class ones with the two N-type connectors? Tazos. No, absolutely not. So the carrier class will continue. Again, it's a, it's a totally different form factor, right? So um, there'll be no, no replacing. They'll both be available uh, for you to purchase. Right. And also, you know, in the, from the point of uh, scalability, uh, there is really no replacing those, uh, um, those carrier class horns, simply because there is so much wider tool, uh, tool set compared to the, to the starter products that they're really not complementing each other. They're really uh, two product groups for different purposes. Okay. Well, we have a, we have a floodgate of Spanish questions, <laughs> but let me fish one, uh, one out in English. So why not include the frequency range from 4.8 gigahertz? And this is a question of design. So once you decide on the dimensions, of the feeding waveguide, there is really no um, there's really no changing it because the waveguide functions in a way that it has a cutoff frequency, meaning that because of its fixed size, it only works from some frequency, you know. And of course, we you know we sealed the design uh, quite a while ago, uh, so it would be very difficult. <laughs> it's impossible to change right now. We would have to design a new product altogether, and so that's that's why. 
Ok, eh, aprovecho la eh, oportunidad para saludar a Mario, que nos escribe, creo que desde México, un saludo Mario para ti. Eh, y bueno, nos preguntan nuevamente, ¿dónde compro en México si tenemos algún distribuidor autorizado? Eh, el nombre es Atanasio. Bueno, eh, ya lo mencioné anteriormente, en México tenemos a Cisco, es eh, nuestro distribuidor máster, por lo tanto, la variedad de productos que tienes es bastante amplia. Puedes consultar entrando a la web de ellos directamente, tecleando en el cajón de búsquedas RF Elements y vas a ver ahí toda la descripción de nuestros productos. Sobre los nuevos que acabamos de presentar acá, ellos los estarán recibiendo próximamente, fines de abril, inicios de mayo, primera quincena de mayo. Y también, bueno, van a tener la página web completamente actualizada con todos los modelos nuevos. Entonces, por favor, pues comprueba con ellos. Ok, so, why don't, uh, why don't you have radoms for all the ultra dishes? meaning also the smaller ones. What do you think, Caleb? So there's definitely potential for that in the future. You know, the first one is obviously the demand is for the largest dish. Those have the most wind load. So that was really important that we get that one ready first. For the other smaller dishes that are in the, you know, updated series, uh, there's definitely some potential. And depending on the economics and demand, we'll look at developing some ultra horns for those smaller dishes. So, okay. Eh, tenemos otra pregunta, ya. Jonathan nos pregunta que, eh, ¿cuándo estarán disponibles los productos en Estados Unidos? Bueno, en Estados Unidos eh, también van a estar disponibles igual finales de abril, eh, primera quincena de mayo o en mayo también. Entonces ahí tenemos una serie de master distribuidores que lo puedes encontrar en la página, nuestra, en la página web nuestra listados. Puedes acceder también a los sitios web de ellos y preguntarles también o básicamente mantenerte informado. Pero la fecha estimada que tenemos es fines de abril, primera quincena de mayo también para Estados Unidos. Well, it seems like we're running out of the, of the English questions. Uh, yeah, I, I can't see too many over there. <laughs> yes, <laughs> or the Spanish, uh, Spanish ones. Yeah, the Latin American market is really, really growing. So there are some questions that uh, we keep getting asked over and over. And one of them is good to, good to put it out there, is that, well, where do you buy uh, RF Elements products? And the answer to that is, well, on our webpage, on the, on the very top uh, menu, we have the, the link to Stalk Locator. Yeah, so clicking that, it brings you, brings you to a page where after selecting your geographical region and the product you want to buy, uh, you will get a list of distributors nearest to you. And that's really the best tool to get the answer to where to buy our products. Muy bien, tengo otra pregunta de Vladimir, también nos, nos pregunta que si los modelos de te van, van a estar limitados a cierta cantidad por cliente que lo compra. No para nada, o sea, Vladimir, no va a haber ningún tipo de límite en lo que puede comprar una persona. Eso dependerá eh, principalmente del stock que tengan disponibles nuestros distribuidores y nuestros master distribuidores. Por lo tanto, ya estamos trabajando bastante fuerte con ellos para que tengan un volumen bastante alto de estos productos para que las personas realmente puedan comenzar a comprarlos según lo que es la cantidad que deseen. Ok, bueno, tenemos también otra pregunta. Ahora nos eh, escribe Cristian desde Ecuador. ¿Cuándo estarán disponibles los equipos? Eh, Cristian, la misma respuesta que hemos dado a las personas. Eh, tenemos fecha estimada para nuestros distribuidores máster, o sea, esos que eh, hemos apuntado en diferentes países. Pero en el caso de los distribuidores en Ecuador, ya igual ellos tienen la información sobre estos productos y vamos a estar trabajando con ellos lo antes posible para que eh, básicamente los obtengan y nosotros ser capaces también de enviárselos. Entonces, eh, estamos anunciando periódicamente eh, por nuestro grupo de RFLMENS en español cuando los distribuidores repite, eh, reciben todo lo nuevo. Entonces, eh, por favor, mantente al, al tanto por ahí que vamos a estar anunciando entonces que cada vez que esté llegando algo nuevo a los distribuidores. All right, so let's do one more, one last question. Okay. And that's behind you, there is a twist board for the A5X. Can you show it? Well, of course we can show it. If you can show it on the detail. And the adapter itself is actually uh, the same adapter you used to, yeah. Same principle, you just take the radio, slide it in until it's clicked and that's it, ready to be installed. Very well, so uh, this concludes uh, today's presentation. Uh, the questions that remain unanswered, we will reply to all of them afterwards. Uh, you can find a recording of, of this presentation on our YouTube channel, so you can review it later. And if you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach to us throughout our social media platforms or throughout the website. We hope you find 
our new products useful, and we are looking forward for your feedback. Thank you and have a good day. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining. Yep. Thank you. Thank and you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.